Hello, my name's Paul Fisher and welcome to this uh, Parallels Quick Start Guide for installing um, Remote Application Server, or RAS, as we shorten it to. So, a quick agenda for the for the video. Um, we're going to you know, have a look at who this video is for. Um, what do we need? So, prerequisites. There are very little prerequisites. Um, and you know, I have sort of pre-created some virtual machines and, and I've got a domain and things like that. So just a little look at what we've got available or set up already and then um, you know what we need to do. And then we'll look at the install steps um, and a deployment diagram just to get an understanding of, you know, of what we set up again. And then we'll uh, you know go through the actual install. So who's this video for? Uh, well, for you, if, you know, if you're interested in um, setting up Parallels RAS in a, a test environment, POC, um, anything like that. And I'm going to look at two two deployments. So first off, we'll do what we uh, call uh, AOI. It's so all-in-one deployment. You know, basically great for testing, trials, POCs. Um, so it's just just one server that we need there, really, and that will allow us to publish applications and desktops um, and get a good feel for remote application server and, and how it works and how it performs etc then we'll you know once we've done that we'll move into a sort of a second uh, deployment scenario that we often use again for POCs and it's more of a hi highly available setup um, so yeah we effectively will have two two virtual machines and that will give us a highly available solution that could be using a POC and perhaps even uh, moved into production um, so you know, perfectly able viable to do that <clears throat> so what do we need um, so we're going to need some uh, servers uh, you know, to start off with and, and typically we'll put that on a hypervisor um, or a cloud platform so you know virtual servers uh, are recommended we can support physical servers uh, but we don't see too too much of that these days especially in you know, POCs um, so the all-in-one setup that we're going to do first is as, as mentioned it's just one uh, Windows Server 2019. Others are supported and they're sort of there on the screen at the moment. Um, but we'll we'll go with Server 2019. <clears throat> and then uh, for the highly available deployment, we, we just need an additional server. Uh, so effectively, so we t need two Windows Servers 2019 um, to install the RAS components on, and uh, to make uh, the certain components, the secure gateway component, um, highly available. Um, we're going to use the Parallels RAS HALBs, which are Linux-based appliance, and do that load balancing for us for those secure client gateways. So what have I completed already? Um, well, I've deployed a couple of servers, 2019 servers, on my Hyper-V server uh, from an ISO, and obviously, you know, even prior to that, I've set up my Hyper-V server. Um, I've also... Uh, got a domain controller it's just just one virtual machine so I've domain joined the 2019 servers um, I've, you know, I've done windows updates of course I've installed some applications on these two 2019 servers uh, so I use ninite.com for that um, just created a little installer so Chrome Edge Notepad LibreOffice etc um, just put on there and we'll, we'll publish those as well I obviously downloaded the installer uh, and I've copied that over to um, a shared location in my you know, newly created domain uh, to, to do the install from um, that's you know there's only really one MSI um, that we need to download uh, it's about 150 meg in size so not very big um, so we, we don't need different downloads for different server components the the only additional download is the HALB so the, the, the Linux load balancer appliance that we're going to deploy as well so in terms of the flow uh, of, of how we're going to do the install, um, as mentioned, the first we're going to do the all-in-one uh, setup. So I'm going to install RAS on my Parallels RAS1 server, and then going to configure the RDSH role, uh, and port as SSL certificate that I've created, and publish some applications, publish some desktops, and then test the connectivity on the internal network. And then I'm going to look to um, configure it as if I was setting up uh, for external access. Um, 
So I've got users you know, connecting, working from home, that sort of scenario. I want them to connect to my applications and desktops. So I'm going to configure that. So I'll configure the DNS for that, split DNS, so uh, internal DNS and external DNS. Uh, configure the firewall, so you know, I kind of you know, broadband router firewall and configure that to uh, allow, well, configure the natting, I should say, uh, effectively through that firewall. And then I can test the uh, connectivity externally. And at that point, the, the all-in-one um, scenario is, is set up and complete. And then, you know, to, to create that HA environment, that second scenario that we, we looked at, I'm going to deploy the second, <coughs> second server. So I'm going to deploy the second server. Uh, and that effectively, and that essentially is adding in uh, a second server as a publishing agent and a secure gateway. And so I'm going to run and do that on the Parallels RAS2 server. And finally, we'll add that second server as an RDSH server within the Parallels RAS console. So this is what we're going to deploy. Um, so starting on the left hand side, we've got that uh, firewall. Um, that will be natted to the halves. Um, so we have a, what we call a virtual IP that kind of floats between those two halves. So it's active, passive, low balancing um, for the halb element. And that will low balance the secure gateways. Um, so you can see at the top, we've got the parallels RAS1 server. And on that, we've got the secure gateway the RDSH role and the publishing agent on there. Um, and then Parallels RAS2 server is a, kind of a, co a copy of that almost. So we've got the secure gateway, RDSH role and publishing agent on there. And obviously on the right hand side, we've got the active directory available to us. So that's effectively what we're going to set up. So let's um, break out of this uh, slides now, we'll break out the slides and we can start the Okay, first things first, uh, let's go to my RDP client. Um, so here I've got connections to some things I'll be using obviously throughout the install. We've got the, the server, so I'm, I'm using a Mac mini here with um, Windows Server 2019 and Hyper-V enabled. And here you can see I've got the, the virtual machine running the, the domain controller as mentioned. Um, I've set up those two uh, 2019 servers that you know, parallels RAS 1 and 2 that we're going to do the install onto. First scenario, we're just using um, the RAS 1. The second scenario, we'll be adding in RAS 2 and then configuring the halves. So I've, I've partly configured the first halb. Um, I'll, I'll go through um, sort of a complete setup and configuration of those a little bit later on. So I'm just going to RDP over to this first server. So I've got that connection here and um, go straight away and start the install. So if I go here, I've got the install already downloaded. I'm just going to simply double click on that and run it up. And it's pretty much next, next, next. Um, obviously, we uh, read all the um, license agreements and uh, click next on that and agree to that. We'll leave it on the default path. And I'm just going to use the, the, the top option. We can come into custom and if you wanted to install the web admin portal, then you would need to do that and uh, select it there. But I'm just going to go with the defaults. Um, and we go next again. You can see it's going to add in the various firewall rules uh, that we might need incoming. And yeah, I'm going to install the single sign-on components. It's, it's optional, you don't need to do that. Just make sign in um, a little quicker, I guess. So then we'll click install. The single sign in component, it, it's not related to clients or users logging in, it's, it's purely logging into the, um, the console. Now we can uh, set up delegated permissions in the console so we can give that out to help desk engineers and the like. Um, and you know, if, they're, if they want to install the console on their workstation, um, then they can do that and it just means they don't need to type in username and password they could just uh, single sign in with their credentials and log into the console 
Um, okay, so that's, that's the first install part done really. So now we're going to launch the console and uh, do some configuration. And the first thing um, we need to do is is license it. And actually, what I'm going to do is, before that is ask him for a reboot, and that's because of that single sign-on component. I'm just going to say, yes, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll give it a restart and perhaps uh, watch it doing through the reboot here. Okay, that Windows update is finished. So let's go back and uh, log into the server. And we can go and find our Parallels remote application server console there. So I'm just going to start off by putting in localhost. We can leave friendly name free. I'm going to choose single sign on, or obviously we can put in uh, different credentials there if we want, and click connect. Now the first thing we need to do is reg uh, sorry license the um, Parallels RAS. Uh, so if you don't have a, an account and a bit and it has to be in a business account and it's a, a my parallels account then you can simply click register uh, and fill out all the information there and that will create a, a parallels account for you or if you do you can go ahead and enter your details Let's see if I can remember mine Okay, and I'm going to just choose activate trial version. And that account could be used you know, going forward if you, you do purchase Parallels. Whereas um, you, your, your key will be associated with that account and you can manage it there and, and split the key in, into different quantities and things like that if you want. So that's done. It's giving us a little warning. Don't change the IP address. Um, you know, please ensure that it's static and uh, the MAC address doesn't change either because that will deactivate the, the license. Um, okay, so first message here is saying you don't have any um, providers or anything to publish applications and, and desktops from. You know, this video is just concentrating on session hosts. Obviously we can support VDI, remote PCs uh, as well, and also uh, very recently um, Windows Virtual Desktop, you know, Azure Windows Virtual Desktop. So let's take a look at what we've got set up. Um, if we come first to publishing agents, we can see there's the server, that's status okay. Just click apply because it told me up there. If we take a look at gateways, again, we've got the same server as a gateway. So the same server is a RAS secure client gateway and a publishing agent. Um, now I'm just gonna do a little, little change here. I'm just gonna call that site one rather than the host name and we'll call this POC um, uh, POC that'll do um, so we just apply and quit those settings and uh, yeah we'll go to session host you can see we've got nothing listed there so I'm going to add in this server um, so I'm just going to type in localhost Add that to the list. You can see it's resolved, um, and also it's detected that the Microsoft RDS role is not installed. So it will do that for us. So we can go next, and these are basically the admin tasks that'll do. So add the firewall rules again required for this particular role. Install the RDS role. Enable desktop experience. That allows us to um, have Server 2019 or 2016 look and feel like Windows 10 to the users. Um, re reboot if required and I'm going to add it to that default group. Go next. Next thing is it, it will enable remote desktop user um, access and put in some groups. So by default it will um, put in authenticated users so any domain authenticated users will be able to log into that um, this server. Um, you could change that if you've got different groups if you want you can add them in as many as you want but I'm going to leave it as default. Um, I'm not going to uh, apply any profiling technology at the moment in this um, sort of setup example, um, but we do support FS logics and user profile disks. So we can manage that 
you know, all through and configure that all through the uh, the wizard here. And optimizations, I'm going to just go cautiously with this, um, just because um, we don't you know know what applications or potentially you know in your environment you don't know whether certain services if we stop them, and um, you can see an example of it, quite a number of services that we would disable to save resources. Um, you know, as I say, be cautious. Some of those services might be needed for some of your applications. So I, um, I basically just start start like this, and that will do some visual effects. You can see here, or just that for the user. So we'll go go next, <coughs> and next again. Okay, so to remember. Now the reason that popped up is uh, basically because of UAC we're, in, we're installing on our self uh, on the same server at the moment. Um, that's not always necessarily required when we're installing on a separate server, which we'll do later because um, we'll use the credentials we're logged on through and then pass that over to the server and execute the MSI remotely effectively. Um, but all will become clear later on that. And you can see it's going through the task so it's copied the MSI uh, to itself this time. Um, it's executed it. It's you know running the MSI. It's installed the MS RD session host role, and that's done. And we can click finish. And we always have to click apply um, when we do some configuration changes. Um, so what we should see here is login disabled until reboot because we need a reboot so it's going to do that that manually so I'll come out of the console let's hit restart again go over and have a little look at it doing that and hopefully we won't get windows updates this time okay so it's working on the feature update to the rds role windows rds role Okay, that's finished. So let's go back and log into that server. And we'll bring up the management console again. Okay, so now we should see, you know, we've got the publishing agents, we've got the gateway, and now we've got a, an RD session host server again it's the same server so as I mentioned earlier this is why we call it all in one because we've got all those servers or roles in one one server and we can have a little look at the site overview as well and get some stats on the various servers and, and roles there okay so next task um, we had on the list was to import our certificate so I'm going to do that so we head over to certificates we just click on import and I will browse out to the certificate file I've got that on my shared drive again uh, that one and then we'll browse the same location where I've got my private key and we are going to call this connect dot remote desktop dot uk and the usage gateway and helps that's fine so we can leave that as default import that click apply that's uh, that's done right um so the next task is to publish some applications and desktops so let's go over to the publishing section we click on the ad wizard um you can start with applications uh, you can see you've got you know, various options there so desktops there as well we could quickly publish out v applications web links uh, documents or access to users file share perhaps let's go with applications um, we've only got a session host available to us at the moment because we haven't you know set up any VDI or remote PCs I'm going to choose installed applications and they're going to use that that group you know, we've only got one in the in that group at the moment so you can see it's looked in the start menu what are we 
going to or what do we want to publish so we can just go through choose the applications or, or perhaps a folder if we want the whole you know office suite there um, and we'll go with some couple of standard calculator paint win word okay happy with that we'll go next get an overview of what we are applying go next again and that's complete and then we again just commit those settings we can actually if we go to administration and go to settings audit we can see uh, which administrators done done what and in some cases we can revert those settings as well so that's another you know, nice feature of, of clicking apply and confirming the settings so yeah back to publishing now what I like to do is create a folder apps and we can create that folder which is you know for admin purposes only so it just makes it easier for us to or you know, clearer management within the console and when users log in they won't see the apps folder I'm going to leave it like that and then we can just spend a couple of seconds dragging those apps into the apps folder okay and then we can click apply and you know a quick look at some of the settings here we can obviously make some changes to the to the name uh, we might want to pass in parameters you can apply filtering so who's allowed to see and launch this application when they log in from a user perspective by default anyone can um, so as long as they pass authentication they can uh, see the application and launch it but we could say particular user or user groups uh, the device name the operating system type the location perhaps the subnet they're connecting from client mac address or the gateway the secure gateway they're connecting through we can combine those together if we want to uh, to lock it down further um okay so i'm going to go and create another folder desktops and now this time i'll create it as a for an admin purposes and then we click add there selecting that folder choose desktop choose rd session host choose the default group again and we'll call this session based VDI um, and then just a little personal favorite I like to click on use available area and then click finish and apply again so we've, we've done that okay so now we've we've published some applications published some desktops um, and if I quickly remind myself <coughs> the IP address of this server so 30 I'm going to set up the DNS for to point directly to the server. So really a point now where we can test the internal connectivity. So I'm going to take that IP address. I'm going to go over to my domain controller and set up some DNS on the domain controller. It can be an A record. Um, paste in the IP address and I want connect rdesktop.uk so that now matches the SSL certificate that we um, imported uh, and I've obviously pre-created for that um, so we can add that host in so and then what we might want to do is well, well let's let's test this first um, and now you can probably ignore this but uh, this is because of the way my desktop PC is set up it's not part of this domain so I won't pick up that uh, DNS so I'm just going to edit my local host file and give that a quick test UK that's resolving so great so that's now resolving to my single server this RAS1 server that we've got set up so I'm going to let's start with a new window here and we'll go connect dot oh, desktop dot uk press enter on there so you can see what's happened straight away is it's it, it's sort of connected really on port 80 but it's redirected me to port 443 and https and it's using the certificate um that we uh that we set up in there or, already so yeah we can accept cookies i'm just going to use a standard user uh, and log in so 
So let's go with that. Cancel that. Okay, we'll do that first. So that was just associating. Well, actually, what's happening there is it was checking to see if we've got the Parallels client um, installed, which I have. Um, if it doesn't, you can walk the user through installing that. And also by default, if I double click, it will launch with the Parallels client. Um, but just, just to start with, I'm going to uh, right click and say open in HTML5 client. So this is going to open purely within the browser. first time login and, and there we go we have a you know windows 10 full full desktop and um, win, well, windows 10 looking full desktop and this is what we call session based uh, vdi so we can get many users connecting to this one uh, one server with this kind of experience and you know it's pretty much uh, a windows 10 experience you know we might want to just manipulate and get rid of some of these items on the start menu um, which we which we can do, but I'm not going to go through that today. Uh, and we can test some of the applications. Um, so let's go with LibreOffice. We'll just again open it in within the browser. Give that a second. So there we go. That's no, we don't want startup tips. Uh, let's get rid of that. I'm going to just create another another document, and we can you know, we can go back here and and look for other applications. Continue to open those. So if you like, we've got our own taskbar here, so we can quickly multitask between the different documents um, and applications that that we've got open. You know, we can continue to open those. Um, you know, we can search for the applications as well. The so WordPad, and we can carry on opening that or we might say yeah I want that to be in my favorites and some of the other applications in the favorites and we can get access to them from there um, so yeah if I let's uh, let's, let's disconnect that um, desktop and if I double click now it'll open with the default method so this will open with the parallels client and as you can see I, I asked it to use the full screen uh, resolution but not go fully full screen so it's sort of it's a windowed desktop but you can see it's the same looking desktop that we saw um, in the browser okay so you know uh, basic connectivity done and tested um, so let's close out of that and let's just log out of there for now next step is to configure the external DNS um, and point it to my firewall, NAT it through the firewall, so configure the firewall uh, rules and then test it uh, externally or the remote external connectivity. So let's bring up my browser, <coughs> go to um, my domain DNS manager and I'm going to add in a new record and we'll call it an A record or we'll set an A record and we want to connect and that points to my external IP address which I can find here so let's copy that pop it in there save that <coughs> so we should now have connect.rdesktop.uk uh, publicly available connecting to my uh, public IP address which I have done wrong if this is what I want okay let's fix my error there okay so that's my public IP address Right, so we just need to kind of give that time to um, propagate, really. Uh, so I can come and test it. MX Toolbox, one of my favourites. So DNS lookup and connect 
our desktop at UK. Okay, so that's pointing in the correct location. Um, next, I need to go to the firewall and go to my natting rules. And you see, I do have some already, but effectively we want TCP and UDP port 443 pointing to my uh, server. So um, let's just edit those. And it's uh, 30. Okay, that. And edit this one. 30 as well. Okay, so we've uh, updated both of those, um, pointing to the new IP address. Um, so now we need to test externally. And for that, I'm going to um, probably test from my mobile phone, uh, switch off Wi Fi, use mobile data. Um, so I'll record, record the screen there and I'll put this into the video. As you can see, I've switched over to my mobile phone, turned off the Wi Fi to do some external testing. So let's uh, set up a new connection, put in the FQDN that we've set up. So connect.rdesktop.uk. <coughs> Pop in my username and password. Password entry was hidden for obvious reasons. And then we can hit connect and we can see we've got the uh, desktop available to us and the applications that we published earlier. And we should see any second is a full desktop um, presented to us or from the iPhone. Right, so now we've finished the sort of initial deployment scenario that we um, talked about. And uh, so we've got an all-in-one server set up, we've got it um, tested, applications published, and we're connecting to it externally. Now what I want to do is move into a, a two-server scenario, a high available scenario. So first step will be to add in that second server, so the Parallels RAS2 server that we've got. So if I go over to my... Um, Remote Desktop Manager, um, it's kind of connected to RAS1 and we've still you know, just got the, the one server which is the Publishing Agent Gateway and Session Host. Um, so I'm going to start by adding in the other server as a second publishing agent. So LLs RAS2 desktop.uk resolve. Um, and I want it to install a gateway uh, alongside the publishing agent and enable the um, HTML5 gateway, add the rules, firewall rules, etc. So happy with that. Let's go next. I know it's not going to find any components because they've not been installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and click install. Um, okay. So you can see again, it's copying over the RAS installer to the other server, Parallels 2 server, and it's executing that for us and it'll install the publishing agent role and the gateway role. Okay, that's complete, so we can click done, click OK, click apply to commit those settings and then we can refresh here. Sometimes this takes a few seconds. So I'm going to go have a look at the gateway. Refresh there, that looks okay. And we come back to here, another quick refresh. No, okay, that, as I say, it takes a few seconds. We can, I'll come back to, to that. But next I want to add in the 
the same server again as a second session host server. So you can see we're doubling up the roles on two servers and um, becoming highly available. So we'll add in the, so we'll just put in the host name. That's two. Put that into the list. It's resolved it for us. Um, so we'll just go next now. Again, it's going to um, add the firewall rules, install the RDS role, enable desktop experience, restart the server if required, and then we'll add it into that default group um, straight away. Now, the beauty of doing that is it's uh, all those applications that we published, um, because I did install those on, on both servers, will um, be, you know, I don't need to republish them, and they'll automatically be low balance then. So if we connect to a full desktop, it'll low balance between the two servers. If we run up one of the applications, again, that'll be low balance. So we can leave that as default. Uh, I'm not going to, we're not doing that anymore. And we just were cautious with the settings that we applied here. So let's go next. That's fine. Next again. And we'll let it uh, again copy over the uh, MSI, execute it again, but this time putting in the RD session host role. Now you can see it's rebooting. And um, so, you know, it might take a few minutes at this point because it's going to enable that RD session host role for us. Um, and it's waiting for it to reboot, come back up, check that it's. Um, all the services and things are there. So at this point, uh, I might skip forward on time, cut out a little bit of this video just to save a bit of time. Okay, that's done. Click finish. Click apply. You see it's synchronizing. I'm going to pop down here. That's okay now. And we don't need to, need to wait for that there. So it's okay already. So yeah, we've now got um, the, let's have a little quick look at the designer but to show there. Um, we've now got two gateways. They're not yet highly available because we need the halves in front of them. Uh, so that'll be the next step. Publishing agent, as soon as we've got two or more, it's highly available. And we've got two session host servers, which will now be low balanced. So the next step is to configure the halves. Um, halves are Linux um, appliances, so Linux virtual machines that we can deploy in Hyper-V, in VMware, and you know, other hypervisors. Um, and they do the low balancing of the secure client gateways. Um, so you know, just to show you again, uh, if we come here, we're going to do the load balancing of the secure client gateways. Any network load balancer can be used. Um, the halves are part of the RAS license, um, so you can use those uh, if you want to. So um, yeah, just to show you the download um, that I'm going to be using, you can see this is the main downloads page, and that's the main RAS installer. We've got some client installations there as well. Um, but what I have downloaded already is this Halb Appliance VHD because I'm running on Hyper-V. Uh, Hyper so I've already downloaded that. So let's go to my hypervisor. Um, and I have pre-created the first Halb. Um, I will set up Halb 2 from scratch. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, firstly go over and get the downloaded VHD. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my virtual machine folder. See, I've got the HALB1 um, folder created already. I'm going to paste it in there. And then I'm going to go back to my virtual machine, go to settings, go to my ID controller, click on add hard drive, browse out to that location I've just copied it to, and say OK. And let's create the, the next one. So we'll go through the ad wizard here and we'll call this HALB2. Just 
store it in that location. That's fine. We'll just go with that. Attach it to the network. Uh, we're going to say attach hard disk later. This is this is what I'd already done on Alborn, and click finish. And then again, if I come back, uh, I could just copy that one, but I'll um, I'll copy the original one from the install folder. Copy that back to my virtual machines. I've now got help to paste another copy in there and then come back again and attach that hard drive so browse out l2 dht okay okay that's done so let's start with this one i'm going to start it up and we'll connect to the console Okay, I'm going to skip that. Um, and there we can see um, it's got the IP address and it's kind of basically running there. So I'm going to minimize that one, do the similar on the second server. Connect to that console. Okay, I'm just going to go with DHCP, but I'd probably advise that you um, place or set up a static IP address, certainly if you're in DMZs and things like that. So let's go with version 4. Skip. Okay, and that's up and running. So uh, let's minimize that. I'm going to head over to my Parallels Management Console. I'm going to come to the HALB and I'm going to create initially a, a virtual server. Uh, so I'm just going to call this um, Load Balancer. And Zero dot thirty five, which is the IP address I've signed. Two five five two five five two five five zero is the subnet mask, um, and I want it to um, low balance the the gateway and the SSL gateway. So there's port eighty and port four four three effectively. Um, so there is port eighty, um, and these are the gateways that we want to low balance. And there is 443, and these are the gateways we want to load balance. So there, there is a couple of um, modes. So we could do SSL offloading at the halves, um, or we can just pass it through to the gateways. Um, I'll just leave it as default for now. Then we need to add in our halb devices. So you can see that it's, uh, the halb will broadcast. Um, so if it's on the same network like mine is, um, it's nice and easy. We can just add in the servers I'll just do it one by one okay so we've got our two devices that we deployed in there click finish click apply and status okay devices okay and we can see is that as you know as mentioned earlier it's active passive so um, you know 155 the first one is um, active with the virtual IP that we've just created there. So what I need to do now is to update my DNS. Um, so rather than pointing to the gateway directly, 
um, I'm going to repoint it to my HALB virtual IP address. So uh, let's log into my domain controller and um, connect here. Let's change that to 35. Okay. And I then need to head over to my firewall um, to repoint that from the 30 to 35. So let's go to my firewall, quickly log in there. And if we go over to natting, um, port redirection, I'll come and edit these and change these to 35. And change this one to 35. Okay, that's done. Now we'll just have a quick look at DNS here, ping dot r desktop dot uk. Okay, so I've resolved my DNS, that's now pointing to 35. So I can go and test that now. So we've got a new tab open. Desktop.uk. Okay, and then we have our low balanced secure client gateway or um, in the HTML5 portal. So we can go and log in and just give that a quick test. There we go. Same desktop synapse that we saw. And now if I launch the desktop, again, that's been low balanced. Um, over the two now session servers that we have. So if I come here and come back, let's see where the session is. Um, okay, so it's still on one and it was because it was reconnecting to an existing session that we already had. But as, as mentioned that they are load balanced, that's um, load balanced and we can double check that in the publishing. So we come here, publish from RD session host group and we know that we've got those two servers in that group. So load balancing is um, done automatically. We can come and change some of the load balancing rules if we want. Default is user sessions, memory, and CPU. Um, it's sort of resource utilization. We'll load balance the user to the most um, least busy server. Um, so that's happening automatically. 